Hi everyone, I uh, hope you're doing well. Uh, thank you so much for coming to my talk. I really appreciate it. Um, so we're going to be talking about effective strategies for disability inclusion in open source communities. So um, this is from my experiences uh, with open source communities and also the work I've been doing uh, at Open Source Community Africa Nairobi and Community Health Analytics Open Source Software, and that's Chaos Africa. So since we've we already passed time with nine minutes, I'll cut the intros short so that I can dive more into the content and plan for you folks today. So who am I? I am a GitHub campus expert. Uh, and I'm also an alumni for the Google Developer Students Club lead. I co-organize a hackathon in Kenya called Luna Hacks. And I also lead the Open Source Community Africa Nairobi chapter. Uh, I am passionate about diversity, equity, and inclusion. Hence, I dedicate my technical writing skill towards writing for Shikod Africa Nairobi and Pilot in Ghana. I do skate and swim uh, when I'm not talking uh, at conferences or I'm not writing code, and I also do love drumming. So just the story of uh, how, as open source communities, we interact with persons with disabilities or how the experiences of persons with disabilities have been in our open source communities. So just seeing from maybe EuroPython, they'll probably announce like a report after the event. So we'll probably maybe get to see how many persons with disabilities attended the event and let's say how many males, how many females and all that. So how can these metrics then help us in uh, making open source communities more, uh, more welcoming and a better place for persons with disabilities? So we'll start by looking at what exactly is a disability and an impairment. So this always, I'm always confused, but they come hand in hand. So a disability is any physical, sensory, or mental, uh, or other impairment, including visual, hearing, or physical incapacity, which can impact on social, economic, and environmental participation of an individual. So you're not able to uh, participate fully in some activities, because of a specific incapacit incapacitation from your end. Uh, so the difference between a disability and an impairment is that a disability is any condition of the body and mind that makes it more difficult for the person to, with a condition to do certain activities. And an impairment is defined as a loss or abnormality of psychological or physiological or anatomical structure or function. So that's not important though. Uh, what is important is where are we as the globe in when you talk about disability. So currently disability affects 10 to 15% of adults globally with 470 of them, 470 million of them predicted to be of working age. So these probably are people you could have in our open source communities as project managers, as our maintainers, or as our contributors. And persons with disabilities experience high unemployment, causing the estimated annual loss of more than 1.3 trillion in GDP US dollars. So if we try and see, we know that open source is the biggest enabler of innovation in the world at the moment. So can we give these people a chance uh, to do and perform their duties at least uh, in our open source communities? So these people with disabilities uh, in employment often occupy entry-level jobs with low pay. So even if someone with disability gets a job, it will be something of an entry-level and with very low pay, but we are again trying to give them a chance through open source. So the key barriers to disability inclusion that most open source community face or even most organizations face is the skills deficit, high unemployment, poverty, and marginalization. So these are some of the key barriers that maybe might be hindering uh, communities or organizations to include persons with disabilities. So let's look at disability inclusion. So what does inclusion really mean to open source communities or to persons with disabilities who want to join our open source communities? So inclusion means that one is accepted and recognized as an individual beyond the disability. And inclusion also means you have a personal relationship with family, friends, acquaintances, and that's of course fellow open source contributors. And then having appropriate living and accommodation, having employment, and having appropriate formal and informal support. So we talk about disability inclusive development in open source. 
we seek to ensure the full participation of people with disabilities as empowered self-advocates in the development processes and emergency responses and works to address the barriers which hinder their access and participation. So we're not trying to, we're not trying to like talk on their behalf, or we're not trying to really look into like speak on their behalf and all that. What you're trying to do is you're trying to empower them to be self-advocates in the development process of these open source software that we currently use and in the communities that we are in. So as I mentioned, we can always be the change we want to see. So what are some of the first steps we can start taking in making sure that probably a EuroPython or any other community becomes even more inclusive to persons with disabilities? So transformational leadership that relentlessly questions the status quo of systems. So this transformational leadership is what we're currently facing at Chaos Africa. So we recently, I'm using Chaos Africa as my case study because it's one of the communities that I participate in and I lead the disability inclusion efforts at Chaos Africa. Uh, so one of the things that we started on is we started having disability outreaches. So thanks to our lead, that's Ruthie Kega. So Ruthie Kega has empowered us to take the lead and start reaching out to persons with disabilities because we noticed in our community, we don't have enough persons with disabilities who are delivering, who are actively participating in the activities we are doing. So we seek to reach out to them. And then creating a compelling vision for social change. As an organization or as a community, you can, I will share in the coming slides, how you can really craft a vision for social change and for disability inclusion in your open source communities. And then most open source communities or many communities I've talked to and have a chat with, they probably say that uh, we really want to include persons with disabilities, but where are they? Uh, we can't reach them. Like we need them to show up and show out so that we can reach out to them. So one thing is to also have a referral program when sharing opportunities and leadership positions together with internal disability disclosures. So we understand that we have visible disabilities, like where I can look at you and say, like maybe you're physically vulnerable, but you have latent neurodivergent disabilities where I can't really tell unless I have a chat with you. So can do we have internal disability disclosures in your communities? where, for example, someone can reach out to the lead or the, the, the committee that deals with disability and they're like, oh, hey, uh, I'm, I have this disability and this has been affecting my contribution in this community. And I feel like if this is done, it will be better. So having that also in your community really helps. And then building disabilities into existing agendas and not merely adding separate disability activities. So this is something that it's easier said than done. Uh, mostly you'd find that people have special rooms for persons with disabilities and all this and all that. But persons with disabilities just want to be included as you are being included. They're not requesting for any special treatment. They don't need that. They're not requesting for any sympathy. They don't need that. They're, they just want you to include them into your existing agendas and not just add them as a separate disability activity. One of these is probably making sure you have an inclusive venue. Uh, so that they can easily walk around the venue or access anywhere in the venue without even then like having to need help or anything. Another thing which is most importantly is develop an education and awareness program that challenges normal ergonomic able-bodied notions. We've seen most of this is already happening in most of our communities, and that's really good. We've even seen like yeah, we we are we've been hosting like a pilot this uh, pilot this. A special session. So those are some of the things that we are looking at. So when you're developing an education and awareness program, you're trying to reach out to these people where they are, not creating like special things for them. And then refocusing our attention on the human ability to perform a task and not just ignore the existence of an impairment, but you explore what this person can do with the intent of really unleashing their talent alongside the impairment and not just focusing on the impairment alone. So we, what, what I have, what I usually try to share with you is I want you to leave this talk with actionable strategies. Once you're living here, you know how your community is and you know how many persons with disabilities you have. You, are, you, are, you want to see if you're increasing this number or if you're a perfect number. So what I try to share with all of you today is a disability mainstreaming strategy where you can all go out in your communities after this and then talk to your community members and see, talk to your leadership programs and see how you can really include everyone in this community. Yeah. 
So disability mainstreaming is a strategy for making the concerns and experiences of persons with disabilities an integral dimension of the design, implementation, monitoring, and evaluation. So we are starting all the way from the designing of our programs in our community. So from the design to the implementation, to the monitoring and the evaluation of policies and programs in our community spheres, so that persons with disabilities have the same access to utilities as persons without disabilities. So we, we, we're not having any difference in any of this. So let's look at how we can have disability mainstreaming in our communities. Uh, disability awareness training sessions um, uh, and persons with disabilities and empowerment, and then accessibility to physical facilities, offering leadership position to these people, creation of policies and procedures, and practices that guarantee mainstreaming, and then setting up a disability mainstreaming committee. So I'm going to go through all this step by step so that you all are uh, I'm going to share with you a step-by-step -step overview of how we're actually going to get started and then how we're going to move on. So the first thing is to set up a disability mainstreaming committee. So this is the team that is going to make sure the, the, the voices of persons with disabilities are heard in your community. So what will be their work? Their work will be the, be the focal point on disability-related issues. They'll ensure that there's inclusion of PW, persons with disabilities or PWDs in community activities. And then 5% of these should be community members uh, who are PWDs. And then they will work on submitting quarterly progress reports and implementing recommendations, creating awareness on disability issues and the universal design in community program and activities. So who will be part of this committee? This committee should consist of a senior community member, for example, let's say the chair of this conference, or let's say the, the lead of the committee you are leading, and then it will consist of an executive member for representation. So let's say we have, let's say, someone from the PSF board joining this committee, or someone from, let's say, the DEFNA board joining this team, and then we'll have 30% of the PWD representation. So 30% of this committee should be persons with disabilities, and then disability focal person as a secretary and last one. So this will be like the one that, let's say, a spokesperson for this committee who will be reaching out and lasting different communities and attendees about several issues. The second step is formulating an action plan. So you have a committee. Now let's see what this committee is going to do. So this committee will work on an action plan. So after you establish that, you, you have to establish and train this committee. And the training can be done by, let's say, for example, at Chaos Africa, we partnered with uh, an NGO, a non-governmental organization called Project Enable. And Project Enable runs training for our speakers during the last outreach we did, and also to us ourselves as the as the members of the, the working group. So that's how you can probably work around the training of these people. So once they've been trained, look at the objectives and activities that your, your committee is looking to achieve. So let's say, your community in Python and are looking to achieve these goals. So what are some of the goals that they are themselves as the persons with disabilities can also take part in? Remember the goal is to not create a specific thing for persons with disabilities, but to include them in what you are currently building. The third step is implementing a disability mainstreaming action plan. So you formed a committee, you created an action plan, now you're implementing the action plan. So implementation is based on specific areas as identified. For example, I'll keep using Europe, Python, and Chaos Africa. Uh, so Chaos Africa, we host a conference called Chaos Con Africa. So let's say, notice last year, we didn't have any person with disability who took the stage, like who became a speaker at the event. So one of our action items is be, will be looking out for persons with disability in our community, training them on how we do this so that, and having them to be part of our community and looking forward to them, taking the stage in next year's chaos plan. So implementing is based on specific areas. It can be the speaker's area, it can be the data science, maybe the data science working group doesn't have persons with disabilities and, all those. And then once you've identified this, have performance indicators within the specific reporting quarters. So for example, uh, our, our performance indicator this quarter as the Chaos Africa team was to reach out to persons with disabilities and train them on data science, web development, and the different tracks in software engineering. So our specific uh, reporting quarter will be the, the third quarter, and they're going to be reporting about that specifically. So those are some of the things we will be looking at. And then the fourth step is you monitor and you evaluate. 
So once you've, uh, you've done all that, it's important to conduct a pre and post assessment with the ones you're reaching out to, or maybe just your community members to see if these can really work. So inform the position of the community on disability and disability and, and planning. And the best way with this is if you're an open source community, having all this in your public repo or something that is public can really help. And then, so this is an example of a table or a slide that you can use to have a work plan. So let's say this is the level of mainstreaming, the objective of the, the mainstreaming action, and then the activities or strategies that you did, the timeline that this is running on, and then who is responsible for this, just for accountability and all that. And then to build up on this table, you can have like the level of assessment is the event venue. The tool you're going to use is the physical facilities and premises audit tool. And then the explanation is this statement seeks to identify event venues for physical facilities and premises that provides access to all persons, regardless of their, their physical disability or not, from the main entrance to the service areas. So this is just an example of it. And then number five, uh, just as many open source communities do, having a quarterly report is a great way to be accountable and share with the world what you're doing and helping other open source communities learn from what you're doing and build upon that. So these reports are, of course, made public for transparency. We, of course, are assuming all of these are open source communities, so everything is going to be public and are based on specific disability and assuming indicators in the performance review. And then it should highlight the progress made to the community against the objectives and strategies outlined in the action plan. So this can be an example of, of something like that. It can be the, of the objective you had, the activities you did, what, your, what are your performance indicators or targets, and then what are the outputs that you have and what remarks do you have to share. Uh, so I know I might have rushed through this talk because I'm like five minutes to the top of the hour, um, uh, but one tree cannot form a forest. And we need, I need you to take this up from this talk and do this also in your communities. Let's say if you're coming in from sub saharan Africa, you're coming in from Europe, you're coming in from Asia, please take this gospel to folks in your communities and let them know that persons with disabilities also stand a chance in our open source communities. And they should not just be ignored or we should not just be publishing policies for the sake of publishing policies. Let us have committees, let us publish reports, let us tell the world what we're really doing to have them on board. So I know I might have rushed through this talk and you might be having questions and all that. So please let's be friends, uh, reach out to me, maybe that will direct you to my GitHub that has all my other links, including my email and my Twitter. Uh, so please uh, reach out to me and we will definitely have a conversation about this. But I'll bring back this slide. Uh, I just want to give a shout out to Velda Kiara and Mohewe. They are currently physically there at the EuroPython. And Velda Kiara and Mohewe helped me craft all this content you are seeing on my slides. They helped me review it in some way and everything. And everyone here in the room right now, uh, thank you so much for joining my talk. I really appreciate that. So I'll bring back this slide. I can see we are three minutes to the top of the hour. So I don't know if I can take questions for that time or if maybe anyone needs clarification on this time. Okay. We do, thanks so much. Uh, we do actually have about two minutes now if there are any questions. Uh, yeah, if you have a question, just go up to the microphone behind you there so we can all hear and it'll be on the recording. Uh, yeah, my question would be, like you said, include the people who are already there in the community, but mostly uh, my feeling is that the starting point is really hard. So what do you do to actually get people actually to join if there are none yet there which can voice their concerns or needs? Oh, yeah. Okay. So the best way to start, uh, I'll give an example for Chaos Africa. So when, when we were starting out at Chaos Africa, we only had one individual, I think only one individual with disabilities, and we wanted to reach out to more. So what we did, of course, open source communities, one of the very thrive is through partnerships. So we reached out to a non-governmental organization that focuses on persons with disabilities in Lagos, Nigeria, that's Project Enable. And through them, they gave us their audience, and they were like, okay, so we just you have these people in our hands, but we don't really have the tech skills to teach them. So Chaos Africa is coming in to train these people, and you're hoping that one day they'll become our community members. So I'd say the first thing is 
try and seek some partnerships with organizations that are already dealing with persons with disabilities. Uh, the third thing, the second thing is when you are, let's say, have uh, accessibility features in all your things. So, for example, when you're publishing a call for speakers, let's say for Euro Python, uh, there's a specific sign that you can, a signage that you can add to the poster to show that this is inclusive to persons with disabilities and also add that persons with disabilities and maybe, let's say, females are encouraged to apply. So they'll be like, oh, we're being welcome to also join this community. So have those welcoming strategies for them. And then the last thing, as I said, is uh, try as much as possible to also reach out to these people So because it might be hard for them to actually come up and say, hey, I need this and this and this and this and this. So I feel like, I hope I answered your question with that, but I feel like those are some of the ways you can start if you have currently no community members that are persons with disabilities. Thank you, that answered it very well. Yeah, thank oh. you for your talk. Excellent, let's all give them another round of applause.